Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. I'll be presenting two methods and also show you a graph. Maybe you can consider that a third method as well. And uh, we'll talk about a, you know, a couple other things. So we have secant squared x equals four times tangent x. Let's start with the first method. Now, my first method basically involves writing the secant squared as 1 over cosine squared and writing the tangent as sine over cosine. And then after that, you, you want to be careful here. You don't want to really cancel anything out, but let's go ahead and cross multiply. And we get 4 times, oops, I wrote tangent over cosine. I was supposed to write sine over cosine. All righty. So when I cross multiply, I'm going to be getting 4 sine x cosine squared x equals cosine x. Again, we're not canceling out anything, but putting everything on the same side would be a good idea. And then we can take out cosine x, which is a common factor that gives us 4 sine x cosine x and then minus 1 for cosine x and the whole thing equals 0. Now, if cosine x is equal to 0, obviously that's going to be a solution of this equation but not the original one, because if cosine x is equal to zero, then tangent x will be undefined. And you don't want that, because we have a tangent x in the equation, so we, we want to be very careful not to make it undefined. Unless you're looking for undefined or, you know, other solutions. But yeah, we don't want to make it undefined. So, cosine x cannot be zero, obviously. We're going to reject that, so we're going to be looking at the other factor, which is 4 sine x cosine x and we're going to set it equal to 1. Now, this equation uh, should be familiar to you because one of the formulas, or the only formula, I should say, for sine of 2x is uh, 2 sine x cosine x. There's three formulas for cosine 2x, but usually a single one, uh, the most common one for sine 2x is 2 sine x. So, so we can just go ahead and divide both sides by 2, that's the reasoning behind it. And that's going to give us one half on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, we're getting sine of 2x, which is kind of nice because this equation is very easy to solve. It's like a basic trigonometric equation, one of the things that you learn first when you do equations. From here, since we know that there are two angles whose sine is one half, they are uh, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, right? Uh, we can safely say that 2x is either pi over 6, and of course we have to add, um, you know, even multiples of pi, and you can divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals pi over 12 plus n pi. Here n is an integer. Okay. So by replacing n with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you can find multiple values. If you want values that are between 0 and 2 pi, then you only use... Uh, n equals 0 and n equals 1. So in other words, they, that gives you pi over 12, and if you add pi to it, it's going to be 13 pi over 12. Great. Those are particular solutions. The other branch is setting it equal to 5 pi over 6, and of course adding the 2 n pi. The n value doesn't really matter here. You know, uh, it's just an integer. And then from here we get x equals 5 pi over 12 plus n pi, like before, and you're going to get 5 pi over 12 and, you know, uh, 17 pi over 12. We've got to make sure that everything is less than 2 pi if we are looking for solutions on that interval. So these are the solutions, and this brings us to the end of the first method. So let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Our second method is different, and it's probably a method that a lot of people use. So the first method kind of looked... Well, it wasn't really painful, you know. You're, you're going to decide maybe second method is more painful. Who knows, right? You'll decide at the end. So my second method involves replacing secant squared with 1 plus tangent squared. Now, this is an important identity that comes from the Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And it's commonly used in, uh, you know, trigonometry, of course, and also precalculus and calculus. Like when you're integrating powers of secant which I have some videos for, you can check it out. Uh, we use this identity uh, a lot. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to replace secant squared with 1 plus tangent squared 
in my original equation and my original equation is remember secant squared equals 4 times tangent so if I do make the replacement I get the following 1 plus tangent squared equals 4 times tangent x now the cool thing about this equation is it is quadratic in tangent x so if I make uh, my substitution my you know favorite method let's call tangent x t which makes sense right we get t squared minus 4t plus 1 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation uh, that can be solved. It has two real solutions. You can find them in so many different ways, but one of the methods that I really like is, you know, the completing the square method. From here, we can write t minus 2 quantity squared equals 3. And by square rooting both sides, you know, we're going to get two solutions, t minus 2 can be uh, square root of 3 or negative square root of 3. So we can write it with plus minus 2. I know some people don't like the way I write plus minus symbol, but this is how I write it. Okay, so from here we get t equals 2 plus minus root 3. And remember, t is equal to tangent x, so we can safely say that tangent x is equal to either 2 plus root 3 or 2 minus root 3. Now, if you remember, with our first method, we were able to find the angles directly. Why? Because we got something nice like one half and we could kind of inverse sign it because we already knew that from the 30, 60, 90 triangle. But here in this case, things aren't that easy. So maybe the second method is more complicated. But again, it's totally up to you. You're going to decide. Now, how do I solve it? Okay, so one of the things that I can do is if I already memorized it, which I did in this case, um, I can find the x values from here. For example, I know that sine 15 degrees, which is pi, uh, pi, pi over 12, uh, is um, 2 minus root 3. Now, how can I verify that, right? Let's, let's make a quick calculation here. So what is tangent 45 minus 30, which is tangent 15, right? That is tangent 45 minus tangent 30, which is root 3 over 3, by the way. Uh, divided by 1 plus tangent 45 times tangent 30, which is root 3 over 3. This gives us 3 minus root 3 over 3 plus root 3. The 3's cancel out. And then if I rationalize the denominator, you know, the top is going to give me something squared, which is, you know, 9 plus 3, 12 minus 6 root 3. And the bottom is going to give me 9 minus 3, which is 6. And this is going to give me 2 minus root 3. So to keep a long story short, Tangent 15 is equal to 2 minus root 3. How do I know that? Because I memorized it. Because it comes up a lot. Anyways, so from here we can safely say that x can be 15 degrees, which is pi over 6. Or uh, you can add pi to it because, as you know, the period for the tangent function is pi. So the other value is just going to be 7 pi over 6. And for the 2 plus root 3, pretty much the same process uh, will give you x equals 5 pi over 6 or you can add pi to it and you're going to get 11 pi over 6. Of course, I didn't write the general solutions because I already did with the first method. So hopefully that'll be good enough for you. I don't uh, have to repeat that, right? Hopefully. Anyways, so we get the same solutions from here as you can see, but the process is not that straightforward. If you didn't know, uh, you could still, you know, uh, find it hopefully like inverse tangent or double angle or something like that because you could use the double angle formula but how do you know to double it right you kind of have to do a little bit of uh, work on that one but let me go ahead and show you the graph which you could consider the third method here we go so we have the graph of y equals secant squared x and y equals four times tangent x and you can see the inter intersection point so it's really hard to fit the whole graph, uh, so I can't show you the other intersection point, but rest assured that the other intersection points are just going to be uh, the, the other values that we found, uh, like 5 pi over 12 and, you know, the other values. So, 11 pi over 12, I'm sorry, 11 pi over 12 and the other value we talked about. Anyway, so you can find it by graphing it, and this kind of shows you a graphical solution uh, because if it Desmos, if you graph it and uh, click on the intersection point and choose radians as your scale on the x-axis, you can see the exact x values. So it's not an approximate solution. It's actually an exact solution in this case. Anyways, so here's another thing that I wanted to share with you. The values, the secant squared and the four times tangent values 
uh, I evaluated it for 15 degrees and 75 degrees. And of course, you could do it for other solutions as well. But this shows you that they are uh, equivalent. And this brings us to the end of this video. video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.